This is a brief guide on how to set up and use the Retrain Inception's final layer for new categories tutorial that's available on the TensorFlow website. For the most part, I will be following this tutorial directly. However, I, I will be introducing some new elements as well as demonstrating how to install the Linux 14.04 Ubuntu on a VirtualBox because that's what I will be using. And this can just be found on their website. Now to run the VirtualBox, you, you do need the ISO file. For my computer, it's just the, the ISO file on the top. For you, it definitely might be different. Let's download this. The next step is to install the VirtualBox. Now for me, it's the Windows host because I am running a Windows 10 machine. When your download and installation are complete for the VirtualBox, you should see a screen that looks similar to this. You won't have these two virtual machines here because I've previously created those. We're going to create a new machine. You can name it anything you want. This is going to be a Linux machine and a 64-bit because that's the operating system that I have. Now we designate how much memory, how much RAM we want to con dedicate to the virtual machine. Now we need to create a virtual hard disk and just stick with the virtual disk image. Dynamically allocated, yes. And this is where we designate how much space we want to devote to the hard drive. I usually give it around 30 for what I've been working on. Now I will adjust several of the settings. Under the system and the processor, I'll give it an additional CPU. Under display, I will maximize the video memory. And in storage, this is where we need to direct the virtual machine to the ISO file for the Ubuntu that we downloaded. And for now, those are all the adjustments of the settings that I will make. To run the machine, you just click the start. After several minutes, you should see the Ubuntu installation guide. Since this is on the virtual machine, you just want to install it. Now, these should have green check marks if you have all of the appropriate settings. For the download and update while installing and the install this, install this third party uh, software, I skipped these because I have tried them in the past and ran into issues. Here, the erase disk and install Ubuntu, that's fine. And click install now. And continue. Then the installation should begin. Now after the installation of the Ubuntu is complete on the machine, you should see the desktop. Now if you're like me, on my computer I experienced this issue where it's just a small screen in the center. You need to go to the Devices tab at the top, insert Guest Edition CD, and then restart the machine. After the Guest Editions is finished installing, restart the machine. If the Guest Editions installation was successful, you should see a full-size desktop now. Next, I'm going to enable some functionality that allows me to interact with my host machine. First, I would like to give myself the shared clipboard, so you select that and you go to bi-directional. And then drag and drop functionality as well, select bi-directional. And then under shared folders, I'm going to share folders with my host machine that I will be using for this project. After you've selected the folder, auto mount and make permanent. And now we have one additional step necessary before we can access those f files in the folder. To access the shared folder, we need to add ourselves to the VBox SF group. And to do that, we type in the command sudo add user and then your username and then VBox SF. To see if it was successful, you can type the command groups R and VBox SF, it was successful. After adding yourself to the VBox SF group, you should be able to see the folders that you've shared from your host machine. They should be here under devices. Here are mine. Now we are going to install TensorFlow through the pip. So first we need to install pip and that is done with sudo apt get install python pip python dev 
for the installation of TensorFlow to work, you may have to upgrade your version of pip with sudo pip install upgrade pip. Now run sudo pip install TensorFlow, and it should begin the installation. Now we'll clone the TensorFlow library from GitHub, but first we need to install GitHub with sudo apt-get install git. As soon as GitHub is successfully installed, we can clone the TensorFlow library with sudo git clone and then the URL for the library. You will need to be in your home directory for this to be consistent with the tutorial when you clone the TensorFlow library. Just ensure that it is in your home directory. As soon as the clone is complete, let's verify that it was successful and let's look at some of the files we will be using for the retraining. So you just click on your home directory and then you'll see the TensorFlow folder. There's a TensorFlow folder within that and within this folder it's examples, image retraining, and then these are the files that will be used for the retrain tutorial. And this retrain.py this is the actual Python code that's used for running the, the image retraining. And anything that you want to adjust with the algorithm would be done in here. For the rest of the tutorial, this is the folder that will be referenced. TensorFlow uses a build tool called Bazel, and it is necessary for this tutorial. It can just be found at the Bazel's main web page and you can find the instructions on how to install your for your respective OS. The first step is to install the Oracle JDK 8 and then update sudo apt-get update and now run the installer sudo apt-get install Oracle Java 8 installer As soon as the Java is complete, you can add the Bazel distribution URI as a package source. Now we can install Bazel. When the Bazel installation is complete, you can upgrade with sudo apt-get upgrade Bazel. After the update of Bazel is complete, we have two other dependencies we need to install. One is NumPy, and we can do this with sudo apt-get install python numpy python dev python will. The next step is to cd into the TensorFlow folder. Now we have to configure our setup. For this, it's just the default also default gemlock is the yes do you wish to build TensorFlow with Google? No. Do you wish to build TensorFlow with the Hadoop? No. Do you wish to build TensorFlow with the XLA just-in-time compiler? No. Please input the desired Python library. Yes, and we're looking to use the Python 2.7. Do you wish to build TensorFlow with OpenCL? No. Do you wish to build TensorFlow with CUDA support? No. And now it will begin. As soon as the configuration process is complete, we can return to the tutorial page. We can skip the step which you download the images because we already have our images. These two steps are equivalent. The bottom one is just much faster if your computer is capable. So copy this line of code, bring it back to the terminal. If you don't have the admin rights on the computer, ensure that you use sudo and run it. Now this step can take, on my computer it took upwards to an hour, so it can be time consuming, depending on what type of hardware you are working with. Once the build for the retrainer is complete, you can run it by running the final line of code.
You'll just need to change the image directory flag to the directory of your images, as I have done. Mine are on the desktop. Now you'll see the Inception model is beginning to download. Now you'll see it's creating what are called bottlenecks. These are the actual files that will be analyzed by the algorithm. It will create these bottlenecks for each of the images in your folders and it will retain these so future analyses will be much quicker. You'll see a series of outputs for each training step, the train accuracy, the cross entropy, and the validation accuracy, and a final test accuracy when it is complete. In this case, it was 71.4% accurate. We can now use the model to analyze images that were not part of the training. Under the using the retrain model section, you'll first have to run the top line of code, ensuring to put the sudo if necessary. <coughs> For me to complete this build with the virtual machine that I'm running that has about 3 gigs of RAM and 1 core, it took approximately 2 hours. Now we're ready to analyze our own images. Now it's possible to do the build and the analysis in one step. I prefer to do it in two just to simplify. Copy the code and return to the virtual machine. This model was developed to identify melanoma in moles, so let's test it on some images that it has not encountered. First we'll test it on the benign image. We'll just change the image directory to that image. Now the output shows that the model predicts with 90% confidence that it's a benign image and only about 9% confidence that it's a melanoma, and that is in fact the case. Now let's test the melanoma image. Now it has an even higher probability that this image is a melanoma image with 96% and nearly 4% for benign. So that's a very accurate prediction. I will now demonstrate how to use the hyperparameters to fine tune the model. You can review which hyperparameters are available to you at the bottom of the retrain.py file. All of them are here. You can see the name of the hyperparameter, the type of input, and its default value here. At this point, we'll need to rebuild the retrainer. Because we previously built it, it actually will be very quick for the rebuild. I've selected two hyperparameters here to adjust. The first is how many training steps. And to do this, you just include a hyphen hyphen and then the name of the hyperparameter and the value. And then I'm also adjusting the learning rate. And you'll see we only went through 20 training steps as I indicated and the learning rate was 0 0.05. Now I've also adjusted the retrain.py file to output additional metrics and also the hyperparameters and their values. First, we need to create a CSV file. All, all of my output will be exported to this CSV file. For this additional functionality, I have just modified the print misclassified test images hyperparameter so that it runs my modified code. You'll see that when this prints, it has a variety of the hyperparameters and their values. Most of these are the default values. And then some additional metrics that I was using for my project here. And then also you'll notice that it did export this output to the CSV, all of this output into the CSV for analysis.